Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> hello, hello. Back here at the easel again. So I have a 16 by 20 inch canvas up here on my easel. Got black gesso, let that dry. I put a little bit of liquid clear, Bob's specialty brand of clear medium here. Really great product for the black canvases or a white canvas, either one. And what we want to do here is, I just want a very simple painting, doing some clouds, because someone asked, and someone really liked the clouds in another one that I did uh, with a black canvas. So I've got a little, very, very, very simplistic scene here, uh, thought out, and I may change it even as I go, but the color that I have on the canvas, just so you can kind of see, because I won't really hold my palette much because there's not a lot of colors here. It's black, midnight black, phthalo blue, and uh, phthalo green mixed together. And you can kind of see what the color sort of looks like um, on my palette. So we'll use that. I've got the whole canvas covered with that. And we're going to just mainly paint a bunch of clouds and see what happens. So what we'll do first is we will take one second all right so we will take a Bob Ross one inch brush here and use it to just put a little bit of color on the canvas before we actually put clouds on there so I'm going to go into just a touch of titanium white over here on my palette knock a little bit of color in there or since it's white, the absence of color there right there we go Okay, and I've got a, I'm going to have a little moon, and then the clouds all around it. So we got to figure out where we want a moon. I would not suggest putting a moon in the center, unless maybe you let it kind of go to one side or the other. I don't want that big a moon. Just a little bit of light to start with, though. So I'm just going to take this one-inch brush and just get in here and put just a... I'm going to bounce around with this. No certain pattern or anything that we're really working on here. And just, you can swirl it up in there. I just want it kind of radiating out from one central light source. And I'll look at it and say, is that dark enough or is that light enough? I'm sorry. No, it's not. I need more. So what I can do is take a paper towel and wipe off some of that color that you picked up. You don't need to clean the brush. Thinner will cause you problems. And it's better to not use it unless you have to. Go into my white again. Oh, we'll just find a little bit brighter spot right there in the middle. And I'm just using little bitty X strokes usually or little swirlies back home. And just kind of letting that color just fade out, fade out, fade out. Okay, so it's gonna be brightest right there where the where the moon is gonna be, right? Alright, and again, you can make that as bright as you want. I mean I could go back in there if I wanted to. Just for demonstration purposes, maybe I will. I do like that little glow being kind of round. The rest of the shapes out here, I don't care. And then maybe I'll just kind of knock that down or just kind of go across it with no pressure. I'd probably suggest you use a uh, clean brush for that. There we go. Okay, so we've got a little bit of moonlight in there. Now we need a moon, right? Maybe one of the funnest things you can do in this or that Bob ever did on the show was paint moons. He always got so tickled at seeing painting moons with his finger. So let's do one. I've got a little bit of titanium white on my finger. In my brightest spot, the moon wouldn't be up here because <laughs> right there's our moon glow. So we want to put our moon somewhere right in here and try as best you can to keep it, you know, circular if you've got a full moon. We could do a little bigger since we're going to have mostly clouds on this canvas. So I'll grab a little bit more and we'll just We'll beef up our moon a little bit here. Again, trying our best to keep it fairly round. I mean, it's going to be diffused somewhat, so it doesn't have to be perfect. If you don't have a lot of paint on there, you could probably take the two inch brush, grab one here, and just go lightly across it. What Bob liked to do, because he put it on thicker than I do, I think, he would take that knife, lay it down, and go like that. And it kind of scoots off a little bit of roll of paint on the knife, so it picks up some of that excess you don't really need. That's probably a good idea to do that. 
So I'm going to take that two inch brush now and just lightly in every direction kind of just knock it down and with no pressure just let the brush kind of graze maybe three or four hairs you know and then say that's enough quit tinkering with your moon tinkering with your moon will lead to problems i guarantee it so we got some moon glow in there right we got a little bit of moon glow it's a greenish blue you can't really describe the color very, very well and i'm going to pick up a fan brush Okay, and you could use the one inch, two inch to paint clouds. I like the fan to put them in, and then I'll use the two to kind of blend them out. All right, so let's get a big sky going on here. Picked up on both sides, loaded my fan brush on both sides, and we got to figure out where the heck are these clouds? Where do they live? Well, let's say we'll start with an easy one. We'll probably have one right here. And I'm just going to do little tiny circles. Just really pushing that paint into the canvas and keeping it moving and I can swirl it in and whatever okay but look I'm just moving that brush really freely around the canvas okay and keep you a handy paper towel and wipe that off after each application and I could always go right here and make it a little brighter if I wanted to okay. again I'm gonna let these clouds kind of wrap around up in here kind of let the let the shapes be different. Don't let, don't have all the same shapes of clouds. It's not fun. I don't think. You can do what you want to. It's your canvas. I'm going to take a two inches kind of clean. And I'm going to get back here. Hold my canvas. Because you know it like to talk to us on this easel. And I'm going to walk that color back with little tiny circles here. Little tiny circles. And just kind of walk it up when I get up to the top of the canvas. And I'm going to go pull it back down this way. So just think about where the brightest spot of your cloud would be as you rotate around this cloud. You wouldn't keep going right here and then get out here and do the front of it. You would do the back of it always. So you're going to have to be going up. You're going to be kind of coming down here, blending backwards, blending up. That make, I hope that makes sense. And then just a little bit of color here. I'll just kind of knock that down a little bit. And all of a sudden we've got a fairly decent looking cloud in there around our little moon shape. Still a lot of dark. The best thing I can tell you on these black canvases is use that dark. Don't cover it all up. If you cover it all up, there's no point in using the black canvas. But we could. We could have something else going on back here. That could be further away than that cloud. And again, just whatever shape, just kind of keep them random. And what I'd encourage you to do is make sure you look at your clouds and don't have the same flow. I Meaning, don't have a cloud go like this and then the one behind it go exactly to the same pattern. Change it up and let it be a little different. Knock some of that back in there. Okay. There we go. We'll just knock this back again, leaving a lot of the dark. Don't cover up all the dark. Leaving some separation in there too would be really nice. We'll get these kind of forms in here and then we can go back and maybe. Make them a little brighter if we want to. Okay, got two clouds in. Let's do. So most of the light's going to be concentrated right there, so it's going to get darker as we move out. We know that, but we also know we could probably have some clouds over here. And another thing that I see a lot of times in classes that I teach is that people have a tendency to uh, stick to the same shape or have a problem figuring out the shape of a cloud. Bob had 27 minutes to do a painting. Bob had to move fast. You don't have to move fast. And here's another little tip about clouds, since you don't have to move fast. If you want to, you can think about a cloud. You can get a reference picture of a cloud and maybe just lightly kind of figure out where your bumps and, and raised spots are and figure out where your kind of cloud goes, okay? And then you can go back, grab some more white, and you can start working on it and you know that it goes up here and it's a big bellowing cloud here and then it comes back down and then it goes back up and then it comes down and then it kind of fades under this one a little bit that helps you kind of lay out your path and that way your cloud doesn't look like a box or you know like a square or you know odd shapes that clouds don't typically look like and then I'm going to get up here and just these little tiny circles, I'm going to knock this back a little bit. 
Again, this is meant to just be an easy, easy, easy painting that anyone can do. Uh, I think black canvases are one of the easiest things you can paint on. If you don't overwork them, don't put too much white. Let it be kind of dark, okay? All right, and then what I would do over here, we'll come back here in a minute, we'll, we'll highlight that, okay? And we'll highlight around the moon area, put a really bright highlight on there. But what I would do over here is, without much paint on the brush, actually I'll wipe some of that off on my paper towel, but I still got some paint in there. Because this is, should be really dark over here. But we can have something. Just some movement, maybe. Mysterious movement. There really doesn't have to be any rhyme or reason to this one. Just as long as it, you keep that brush just kind of moving and twirling. And you can twirl it if you really want to. Just kind of twirl it in your fingers there. And that'll give you something over there to kind of set that down in. Okay, it needs something. It doesn't need a lot. And then always you can find a little area, maybe a little light would peek over and use it. And then kind of blend it back where you don't see much of it again. And we, we can do whatever with that. Okay. Let's put down and we'll, we'll blend again just a little bit here. We'll blend this color back that we have here and we'll get that one right there that we highlighted a little bit rough and move that color around. Don't be scared of the brush here. And then just kind of Lightly, two hairs and some air, maybe just go over all of it. Pick it up like Bob would, and just kind of set that down. And we'll, again, we'll, we'll kind of highlight a few of these areas, and make them a little bit brighter in just a second. So I'll wipe my fan brush off again. And, 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 what if we wanted, oh, I think there'd be another cloud here, though. And we really make this one bright since it's close to this. I was getting ready to say sun. Not a sun, is it? I hope not. A night sun, I guess. I don't want much in this painting besides clouds. I'll just kind of let that one be there. And we can build those layers to where it looks like you're almost looking in a tunnel, a cloud tunnel or something. And I think that's a nice effect. Yeah, we'll just knock, we'll knock on a normal or kind of classic shape here and then we can change it if we want to shoot that one goes all the way up there and it kind of and we can put a bigger highlight on it if we want to go ahead and then maybe it wraps down through there okay. and again lay out your sky however you want to just making sure that you've got some nice pockets of dark in here especially further away you go that way It'd be lighter on the right side of my canvas where my brush is now than it would be on the left side of the canvas because our moon is over where I'm at right now. Now moving away from the moon it's going to get a little bit darker. A little bit darker. I don't really care for that shape so I'll blend that out just a little bit there. There we go. A little better. And then just kind of set that down. Just Nothing to it. There's nothing to it really. I'll show you another little neat brush that we can use here just in a second. Let's do one more and then we'll highlight a little bit and then we'll paint a couple little trees and we'll say this is a painting. You can give away and you can do it. Really, if you move really quick, you can probably do it in 10, 15 minutes. If you don't know yet, I like to take my time, sip a little tea in between painting and um, just kind of think about things. So the speed doesn't matter. Uh, unless it matters to you. Uh, we, I want a little bit of something right here, but I, I really don't want much. So I actually, I'm going to wipe the paint off my brush. I've got too much on there. When I get away from that, there's still enough paint in there, even if I wipe most of the paint out. So I'll let that go off there. Maybe we'll just kind of let this one kind of come in front of this one. And I'm really just using little tiny circles. And down here, I'm almost just kind of making marks more than anything. And then if we wanted to, we could do the same thing over here with a little bit of paint. Maybe I want to leave some dark. And just throw some something in there. Okay. Looks crazy right now, right? It probably is crazy. 
on this black on these black canvases when I make these videos I can't see it real well and sometimes that's a blessing uh, because I'd probably throw a fit on myself with the light shining on it kind of really makes it hard to see and I'm really blending this out down here quite a bit I don't want distinct clouds all the way down here but I do want some light so I'll just move that paint around I don't want to lose all my dark either, so be careful. I want that nice dark here. Because we're going to have some trees down there. Um, that kind of hide some of that anyway. Alright, so wipe off your brush if you wanted to. You could get a clean one even if you wanted to. Hey, it's up to you. It's your world. Load it up a good bit with some white. And let's just kind of go back in here and tickle a few of these edges you could take the filbert you could take the uh, one inch and do this and I'm just going to bring a little bit of a uh, more distinct highlight there grab my two inch again and just kind of blend that out just a tiny bit but I'm not going to touch those highlights I'm not going to fluff them out I'm going to leave them kind of chunky I like chunky highlights I don't know why there we go. There's a there's some bright on that one. We'll grab some more over here. And that one is right next to the moon. It needs to be brighter, doesn't it? So I'm going to deposit a good bit of paint right there. And you can even just kind of push up on the brush if you wanted to. And just, oh, that may be too much. Here's finger paint. There we go. There we go. Showed you how to finger paint. Don't be worried. There's nothing you can, you can really... What's the worst that you could do on this canvas? Um, the worst thing you could do is, you know, don't you don't like it, you just throw it away. That's the that's the absolute worst thing. This canvas will not come to life and hunt you down because you painted a bad painting. There are there there is no such thing as a bad painting. There's just ones that we don't like. Someone will love it. So don't worry about it too much. I want a little brighter right there too. Maybe even let it kind of come in there a little bit like that. Add a little bit more something to it there. And then this would be highlighted a little more. So I don't want to do the tops, I want to do the bottoms. Just throw a little bit of light down here. And really light, light, lightening up around the moon is really what I'm doing. And a filbert would be good here. Just to smash in a little bit of color. Keeping your shapes pretty much the same. And then we'll just kind of get up here and we'll just blend that back just a tiny bit. A tiny bit here. Just blend that out. Blend that out. All the way around it. Okay. So there's a really bright area around our moon. Um, that's getting grabbing that moonlight. And then we can find other spots if we really wanted to. Just deposit a lot more right there maybe. Work it down in my dark a little bit. Blend it a little bit and then leave it alone. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where else? Where else would we want something? Maybe this guy. He's got enough. He's peeking over enough that he might get a little bit of a extra little bit, right? And maybe just carry a little bit extra up in there. Who knows? Doesn't have to sit with our form that we've already got. And just blend as much as you think you need to. I was going to use the little, um, I've got it laying here, I'll show you. This is another great item to use for blending. It's the uh, Bob Ross blender brush. This is actually the blender brush. This, the two inches are called background brushes. I think they're called black background uh, blenders, but this one does great at blending. It also does get great at making little cloud impressions moving it around the canvas. So if you got one of these, these are great. I don't use it too often. Uh, let's see, what else? Where else? Well, maybe one more spot and then we'll make some trees and we'll call this video finished. Right here. Did I do that one already? If I did, I didn't do it enough. I'm going to add a good little bit of white there on top. Now what you want to be careful with adding white is you can, you can get to the point to where it's going to get muddy. Make sure you're using a good dry paint here. Uh, if you're not, you're just and make sure you don't have too much liquid clear and make sure your paint's good and dry. If you start using a paint that's really runny, you may run into problems. We can 
pick some of that and let those clouds just kind of move around here if we want to. Wherever. Put a little bit of, oh, okay. Like they're kind of swooping down. I think that's probably good. I mean, you could you could sit here for hours. Um, I wouldn't, but you know, the most I'd probably sit a few minutes and really just highlight these as much as you want to, but a little bit extra on there in some areas. But again, it's your painting. Wherever you do these, whoever you're watching, just make it yours, uh, and then have fun with it. That's all I ever ask folks to do with my paintings. Anything I share, just have fun with it. And if you do paint something similar, let me see it. Goodness, I may learn something from you. Actually, I probably will learn something from you. So, let me blend that out a little bit right there. And I could, that little area that I didn't care for there, let me blend that out. It's a little soft blender. There we go. Okay. I think I'm okay with that. I think I'm okay with that. So, All right, I'm gonna grab a filbert. And that base color that I made up, I'm gonna add some black to it. Make it a little darker. And I'm gonna take my filbert, just because I've enjoyed it the last couple times, using it to make little pine trees, and that's what we'll make here, just something easy. I always chisel my filbert. And one reason we do that is to make sure, before I go on, I tell you what I want. I want one more cloud here. I'm sorry. Just a, just a small smidge of a cloud. I want these cloud these trees to kind of be going up into the clouds. Maybe over here. And this is this is just for demonstration, so you guys can see these trees a little nicer. It's a little more light down there. And I'll take this little blender brush and really just kind of blend these out almost. Add some of that color back down here. And it just makes the canvas a little bit brighter. It's still dark, so I hope you can see that it's still quite dark. And there's still a good bit of dark that I didn't touch, especially on that side. But that will help me be able to highlight these trees or, or to make the tree stand out down there. All right, let's put some little evergreens in. We'll just start with one. But I'm thinking there's land down here somewhere where the trees are just growing up. There's no land in this painting. There's just trees and clouds. That's why I said it's such an easy painting. We'll just draw us a little line and push a little harder as you go down if you want a really thick trunk. Okay. And then we will just start using the filbert the same way as you would the fan. Just kind of touch and and skip and every skip a spot every now and then. Hold that out or hold that canvas down so we don't have to hear that. And we'll just put some dark areas in the middle and work some little hands and feet out there. It's, it's a hand, these are the, tr the trees, hands and feetsies or footsies that we're working on here. And here we go. Just kind of wherever we think there would be one. And remember the filbert kind of smashing down is going to give you almost a frowny face. Push up it'll give you a smiley face. What you don't want to do is really have those frownies or smileys. You kind of just want it to be you know, just kind of dots on the canvas almost. So don't push super hard. You'll get a really, if you push really hard, you'll get a really big and defined um, smiley face or frowny face. And I'm going to, I'm going to change my mind again, guys. See, these are little things I have to do when I make up these little videos that I don't really have a reference or anything. I need a little bit more light down in here, and I'm just going to put a little bit, another cloud. I didn't put enough over there. And I want those trees to show up. I'm going to really grind that out, really. Probably several hairs in some air. Just take that all the way down. There we go. And really just kind of knock it down a little bit more. There we go. You know, this our silhouette trees show up. All right. Well, where else we want one? We don't have to have them all the way across. I'm just going to do a few, and then maybe I'll, I'll finish them off camera here. But I just kind of draw me a little line with that, Felbert. 
making sure they have different sizes. Don't have the same size tree all the way across. It won't look pretty. It'll be odd. It may look pretty, but it may look odd too. I always say that, but I honestly don't know that it would look bad. Who knows? I'm leaving some little trunks in there. When I get down here at the bottom, I'm really going to push in some dark color. I don't mind it being kind of skinny at the top, but for what we're doing here, I'm going to kind of fill up the bottom and just see kind of the tops of the tree. We may leave them silhouetted. We may actually put a highlight on them. Let's put a big one over here in the corner. We'll bring him all the way up here in the clouds. No pressure on that brush until I start pulling down. Right got There's another big one. That's That'll be the daddy tree there for sure. And just kind of touch the top and then start working out. And you can see why Bob never used the filbert to do trees. It takes a little bit longer than, especially a lot longer than like a two inch brush. Bob had to move. Bob had to move on that canvas where he'd get yelled at by the mean old director lady. Which surprisingly, she was not very mean when I met her. Being very sweet. I think Bob was pulling her leg. I think he was pulling her leg. You can you see the little marks I'm making on the canvas so just just I added I had a little tube of mountain mix. I had a little mountain mix in my dark. It wasn't it was almost not dark enough. I want this one to be kind of full because it's over on the edge. It'll cover up a lot of this blank space and we probably leave it mostly silhouetted. But again, just varying this, the pressure. You're going to get different effects on this brush. It may not always be the effects you want. There we go. Yeah. This would be a perfect one, guys, to paint with friends or family as a first time. Just be careful about the clouds. Don't use too much white. Watch your blending. Blend every cloud individually. Don't wait till the end to blend. Breathe another one up into a cloud here. Right off the canvas, right? And we'll just kind of leave this one kind of sparse. like my top so I fixed it. Um, bounce to the right, bounce to the left, bounce all around. And I will probably end the video. Well, I'll just, I'm just going to paint trees. I might as well just leave it on. Uh, have fun with this one. If it's helpful, let me know. Drop something in the comments down below. Uh, if it's real helpful, share it. Um, so hopefully people that are painting Maybe you're scared of painting. We'll watch it and be like this. If that if that fool can do it, I bet I can too. So that's really what I want. And we'll just kind of again. We're just gonna kind of fill in down here. These trees are just kind of silhouetted. Yeah, I'm kind of liking that. Didn't know if I would or not. Starting to like it. Starting to like it. Had to grab some paint. I'm drying out. I think it's looking okay though. I do recommend keeping it really dark in here. And maybe going out, going back and pulling out some little bitty arms when you're using this this brush. I have the tendency to clump them together. But you can go back and add some really nice things and effects just by going back. It's just taking a couple seconds here. And kind of going back over them. Yeah. All right. So we'll, we'll just we'll finish this up and then we'll call it done, right? So I've got clouds. Uh, I'll tell you what I want to do. I'll tell you what I want to do. I want that one, this next one, to be a little bit bigger than that one. I don't want it to kind of go like that. I want a little bit of variation. Myself, I do. You can do whatever. Chisel that brush up so I don't mess up my clouds too much. Here we go. Big decision. Big decision. 
And if it, this brush is scary to use, use a pan brush. It's the same thing. I've just been liking the effects that I get out of this filbert. Uh, use the uh, oh shoot, the oval that I showed the little video on. That was my favorite brush. This would it would have painted this so much faster. I probably should have just used it. You get in brush moods, I think, and um, it's a good thing, I think. That way you don't get stuck on using one for everything. You'll find one works good for something, and then you'll be like, oh, I'm going to try it for this. And it works well for that. Again, just, it works, this this works well, the oval works well, the two inch, the one inch, the pan brush, whatever you're comfortable painting trees with, use. Okay? That's really the, the key to anything. Your comfort level. Find what it is, use that brush. I want a lot of separation in there. I want to be able to see through my trees to the clouds. And I think this brush, because it's a little smaller, gives me a little bit better control over that. That's just my opinion, though. Feel free to make it yours, or feel free to call me crazy. Either way. And then down here, just smack in some dark. We're getting pretty, pretty close to having them done. All right, we could put a we could put a tiny one right here. Oh, little baby tree. We could even, if we wanted to, we could change it. You know, you have up and down trees in nature. You can do down trees. You just push up, you get a little up effect. The branches kind of push up. There's that. Little baby tree there. I like that guy. This one almost was not dark enough. It's, again, just what, something you can do at the end. Just go back and darken up a few areas because you really want these good and dark. I think my intention is just to not highlight them. I think they would look nice either way. I think for me, I think I'm going to leave them kind of sparse. Or silhouetted, I guess. They're not sparse. Big old guy just beeping him up a little bit. Yeah. Probably need one right here. How tall do we want it? We want it. Smaller than that one, smaller than that one, maybe, maybe we want it bigger. We'll make it smaller than that one, bigger than these two. So this one's going right here somewhere. Put a big old chunk on that one. Alright. Easy, easy, easy. Maybe some gaps in this one. I've not been paying attention and almost filling up the whole tree. One of the advantages of this brush is you can leave some really nice gaps working down the tree here. So let's, let's keep with that advantage that we have with this brush. It's just easier, right? There we go. Now we'll fill in the bottom. Just kind of combine those guys together. There you go. All right. Now we could say that that's just off in the distance. We don't want I tell you, let's do that. I think that would look nice. This is a drop-off point. All right, and we could we could even accentuate that if we wanted to. Just kind of like this tree. We could take this brush of, and just pull some little guys down. Hand brush will do this better, but I'm just gonna use whatever I've got here. So a little something down there off in there and again I don't know how I like that or not but there is a super 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 easy painting trees and clouds uh, it's also a good exercise to work on clouds work on trees and clouds together use it for a combo uh, you know lesson so again if this is helpful let me know like the video, share the video, subscribe, share it with your friends, ask them to like and subscribe, and I'll keep making these. And, and if they're not helpful, I'll probably still keep making them. I haven't, I'm having fun. So, all right, guys, take care. Everybody stay well, and I'll see you in a few days.